Hello, everybody. My name is Joseph Kohler. I'm with the Aerospace Corporation at the Center for Space Policy and Strategy. It's a pleasure to be with here, uh, to be with you all here. Uh, so many people have uh, dialed in, interested in space traffic management, so I really appreciate the opportunity and the time. Uh, the topic for, of my talk today is organizational options for promoting space flight safety. And uh, before I dive into the topic and talk about different options uh, on, from an organizational perspective, uh, let me set the stage a little bit. As we all know, uh, commercial space flight offers significant benefits to society, economy, and uh, national security, of course. And uh, there is a lot of investments going into space flight and financial experts predict that over the next 20 years, uh, the global space economy could even reach over a trillion dollar. Now that is a huge number, of course. However, we cannot forget that space flight still today is very risk prone and still a very capital intensive endeavor. And just to quote from the Commercial Space Launch Amendment Act of 2004, uh, that statement could be, um, uh, is, is still true today that space transportation is inherently risky. So where are we today? Today, nothing has, not much has changed. Space is still often referred to as the Wild West from a regulatory perspective. Um, there is though a desire from governments to implement more performance-based rules. And there is also a, um, I see that the industry is starting to self-organize. And there are many examples like uh, the Space Safety Coalition, Confers, and so forth. So the main point is that today's space still off offers many benefits, of course, but it's still a risk-prone and capital-intensive endeavor. The situation today really reminds me also of a video that I found on YouTube and I want to describe the YouTube video here in a little bit, if we can cue that up. So this YouTube video is uh, a video that somebody took in 1906, uh, driving down on uh, Market Street in San Francisco. This was actually taken before uh, the big earthquake in San Francisco, you see, so all the buildings are still intact. Uh, what you see in this video here is a variety of different uh, traffic participants. There are a lot of pedestrians, horse carriages, um, early versions of a U-Haul truck here on the side. Um, and it's, uh, the traffic is going all over the place. There is uh, no, apparent, um, no apparent traffic lanes. People are crossing over um, and uh, traffic slows down. And what you notice here is that the lowest, uh, lowest common denominator of the traffic uh, determines the speed of the traffic, so which is the pedestrian, of course. Everything moves at a pedestrian speed. Today, um, the situation is, of course, much different. We have traffic lanes, we have rules of the road, uh, we have common understanding of how we operate uh, on the road, we have sidewalks. Um, and this has tremendously contributed to the economic benefit of society. Today, we can very quickly transport goods and people from point A to point B. Uh, we also um, very quickly ad can identify people who are not following the common uh, understood rules and, and tr uh, traffic rules. Uh, when somebody, for example, is driving down on the in wrong lane on the highway, uh, that immediately highlights the situation and uh, we, uh, police can go and check it out. So the point I'm trying to make here is that if we have, when we have a common understanding, best practices, rules of the road, not necessarily regulation and legislation, but space grows faster when it's safer. The space economy grows faster when it's safer. So in order to accommodate the um, uh, economic predictions, not just to accommodate, accommodate but to, to prom by promoting 
spaceflight safety, we can actually achieve uh, some of the predictions I strongly believe um, because space economy grows faster when it's safer. With common rules and uh, common understanding and best practices and guidelines, uh, we can build confidence in space systems. We can lower the risks of mishaps and support technically informed and permissive regulation. So the main point I'm trying to make with my presentation here is two organizational options to accomplish this goal. One is based on the safety case approach, which I'm going to explain here in a bit, and combine that with a collaborative framework. Uh, as an example, the Space Safety Institute that we have been looking at, uh, at the Aerospace Corporation. So what is the safety case approach to regulation? Um, government regulations typically are described in either prescriptive or performance-based regulations. So let me describe a little bit the difference of prescriptive versus performance-based. Prescriptive regulations include precise and very prescriptive language in how systems are to be designed, tested, inspected, and operated. So for example, it would uh, precisely describe, you shall only use this particular type of fuel tubing, uh, fuel tubing, this particular material, this at this pressure and this dimension and so forth. So very prescriptive language. Um, the knowledge of that resides with the regulator. Often it would include information from the industry, uh, best practices observed, but in, in essentially the knowledge resides with the regulator because the operator, all he or she has to do is to implement those uh, um, prescriptive regulations. The advantage is, of course, when it comes to uh, approving uh, um, and you know, confirming that somebody's following the regulation, that it's a simple checklist approach, right? A checklist approach for the inspectors and the operators. However, the disadvantage is that it leaves little room for innovation or for different type of approaches, which is uh, you know, often touted as a very big disadvantage today. That's why people have been looking at performance-based regulation. Performance-based regulation, so while I describe these two versus pre prescriptive regulation, there is a, a spectrum in between. It's not just one or the other, but in, essentially there's a spectrum in between. Performance-based regulations specify the end goal, the end goal of safety, and it leaves room for the operator or the developer on figuring out how to get there. So the knowledge there really resides with the operator who's building the spacecraft or who is operating the spacecraft in achieving that particular end goal of space flight safety. Uh, the advantage is that, another advantage is that the, uh, this allows for innovative approaches, right? The operator can determine and figure out best ways or most cost effective ways to accomplish the, the goal of space flight safety. However, the disadvantage is that there is little review of the implementation and reliance on the operator to accomplish, so the general reliance on the operator to accomplish the safety goal. Um, because that knowledge still resides with the operator and not with the regulator, right? And so that's how we end up with uh, um, Boeing uh, MAX plane mishaps and so forth, because the knowledge role resides with the operator and developer and not so much with the uh, regulator. So how do we uh, um, accomplish both, right? Leaving room for innovation but also still accomplishing that space flight safety while not just relying on one particular party. And one approach there is, um, is the safety case approach. The safety case approach to regulation is actually used uh, in many different countries, not so much in the US, but uh, just to, to give you a definition, the UK Ministry of Defense defines the safety case approach as a structured argument supported by a body of evidence that provides a compelling, comprehensive, and valid case that a system is safe for a given application in a given environment. So let's just let that sink in for a moment. And to recap, the safety case approach requires a structured argument with the body of evidence, right? 
So the question now is, well, who reviews that body of evidence? Well, um, obviously the regulator could review that, but uh, there might not always be the uh, right subject matter expertise uh, remaining at the regulator. So there's another option. Uh, the regulator could uh, use or reach back to an independent third party that is knowledgeable and experienced um, about those particular items that need to be reviewed. So how do we bring it all together? A Space Safety Institute could really accomplish that and bring it all together. Uh, a Space Safety Institute, our vision is that it would be a collaborative platform between government, industry, and ac academia, really open to a variety of different stakeholders. Um, everybody would be welcome to participate and contribute to the task. Um, we at the Aerospace, uh, in collaboration with IAAAS, have been looking at the implementation and the tasks that a Space uh, Safety Institute could accomplish or would, would address. So um, the, this particular collaborative platform of uh, Space Safety Institute uh, could develop uh, with the partners, with the participants and like-minded um, uh, participants to develop best practices and safety standards. So for example, this could uh, could go beyond human space flight, but it could also include uh, space safety data quality assurance. It could uh, include launch, re-entry, orbital maneuvers, uh, human space flight, maybe cyber implementation. So a whole variety of topics that lead to the overall goal of achieving space flight safety. And the point is that this would be done collaboratively with uh, like-minded uh, participants from the industry, from government and academia. Another topic that we, uh, that the Space Safety Institute could address that we have already discussed here is uh, to provide independent assessments and recommendations to regulators and operators. This is that assessment that I spoke to earlier when it comes to the uh, difference between prescriptive or performance-based regulation in order to, to provide that in this independent assessment on performance-based regulations, what an operator used to implement that end state of, uh, to achieve that end goal of space flight safety, uh, a Space Safety Institute could really provide that together with uh, uh, a range of subject matter experts uh, from the participant um, entities. So this could include compliance and performance-based uh, 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 monitoring of compliance for performance-based regulation. It could include uh, space situation awareness data quality assessments or algorithm assessments, um, collision avoidance maneuvers um, and procedures. It could also include the review of uh, cybersecurity uh, implementations um, or another example, the space sustainability rating assessments, right? A body of experts from a variety of different participants really could achieve that, uh, that task to review those assessments and to provide those assessments. A third topic that the Space Safety Institute could address is to work on that fundamental R&D, that basic safety research. What are the new and innovative techniques that could provide spaceflight safety? And um, um, so this could include re-entry, design for demise concepts. This could be looking at better understanding how debris is generated uh, from satellite collisions. Uh, I could evaluate uh, safety hardware, et cetera. So a variety of different implementations of uh, achieving and, and finding those new innovative approach, approaches to achieving spaceflight safety. And fourth would be safety education. You know, it's very important uh, if we were really to build a $1 trillion space economy globally, we need the uh, workforce participants to all understand what it entails to achieve uh, space flight safety. What are the different techniques, the different methods, so we all can learn from each other. So this could include uh, efforts like organizing workshops, uh, training sessions, courses, courses, and publications, of course. So really, focused on safety education. 
overall, uh, the vision is not to build a behemoth institute, a behemoth body, a large body that's very slow, but something that's thin and agile, really just an organizational layer that could reach out to subject matter experts where they reside. So that doesn't necessarily mean that aerospace corporation or JPL or at a university, wherever that pertinent knowledge resides, that subject matter expertise to assess or to address or to research a particular item uh, for space flight safety, uh, the Space Safety Institute would reach out to that in a uh, matrix type approach. So overall, the Institute would be uh, supported by independent subject matter experts that are provided through participating organizations uh, or research laboratories or academia, just as needed. Right? It's a very thin, agile organizational layer. So in order to put all this together, what is the organizational formula for space flight safety? We really envision a, this two-pronged approach using the space safety case approach for independent analysis and validation, and number two, coupled with the Space Safety Institute, something that provides a collaborative platform in order to uh, develop best practices, guidelines, and standards, and so forth. And together, we really think this could provide uh, you know, smarter space traffic management, faster licensing, more reliable designs really to to contribute and jumpstart that $1 trillion economy that people have been talking about, because space will grow faster when it's safer. So as I said earlier, um, the Aerospace Corporation, together with uh, IAAS, we've been studying and looking at the implementation of such a concept of a Space Safety Institute. If you want to find out more, uh, feel free to reach out to me. Anytime we welcome contributions and interest from like-minded parties and organizations. And uh, with that, um, I'm open to any questions and uh, hand it back to you.